Hello and welcome back to my blog. Chapter 7, I split this into two parts. Laugh and Live by Douglas Fairbanks. Honesty, the character builder. This is part one. Just as the straight line is the shortest distance between two points, so is honesty the only proper attitude of one person toward another. Without it, there is no understanding possible. It must always remain supreme as a quality without which character becomes a sham, a superficial thing that has no basis in fact. The ability to look the other fellow in the eye is as necessary to character as the foundation is to a house. It comes out of that great within which we are now exploring. It arises from the courageous facing of our weaknesses and becomes a part of the man who knows himself and laughs with life. At the mere joy of living, doing, accomplishing, winning against all odds. Honesty accompanies a proper self-esteem and its cultivation should become a part of our earliest education. It doesn't grow anywhere except within ourselves and will never be handed to us on a silver platter. If we fail to find it when we are young, it will have small chance of obtaining a grip on us later. It is the one quality with which to crown our highest attributes. It is final proof that we are capable of just thought and square dealing and is proof positive that we are part and parcel of the wholesome spirit which rules the universe. Its possession is greater than riches, for its dividend is happiness and contentment, and we cannot go wrong if we so live that we can look any man in the eye and tell him the truth. To live in the full sense means to be alert. Whatever high moral plane we shall achieve must be held against all temptation. There is no compromise. Self-deceit is nothing less than self-stultification. We only fool ourselves and soon find ourselves slipping downhill. It will be hard climbing, getting back, getting back. And what of the wear and tear on our ambitions meanwhile? Honesty does not grow naturally out of a dull, uninspired life. It goes with the energetic, the forceful. The dull soul, who is content to plod along year after year in the same rut, may be honest, and this one redeeming feature may be of such inestimable value to him that it sweetens and softens his entire days. It will bring him friends, true blue friends, who will excuse all other shortcomings because of his honesty. It gives him the unadulterated trust of his employer, and it arouses a certain admiration among his narrow circle of acquaintances. If this is true with the dullard, the weakling, then what must it mean when possessed by the great? We know, for instance, how the nation instinctively turned to General Washington when it came to choosing their president after the Revolutionary War. He may have been gifted, he may have been one of the world's great captains, but the one quality which endeared him to his countrymen was a tremendous moral superiority. He never told a lie rang around the world. Summed up, his virtues amounted to th those five words. Some statesmen may have been more astute, but Washington was honest. He never told a lie. The people knew they could trust this man, so they elected him to fill the highest place within their gift. Honesty with ourselves is the first thing to remember. Unless we are, it will be impossible for us to enter into that spiritual contentment enjoyed by those who are honest with themselves. If we are untrue to ourselves, how can we be true to others? The framework of a man's moral being must be that of honesty. It must become his very nature and become automatic in its process, in its processes. It belongs to the healthy, those who keep themselves well through vigorous exercise and temperate living. It is not a quality set aside for the lucky few. Every man, woman, and child possesses it in some degree, and only its constant neglect trims it to a minimum. It is one of those fundamentals of life, one of those powerful and moving forces that rule society. We are either honest or we are not. We cannot be nearly honest and get away with it. When one stops to consider honesty, even for a moment, its full importance is realized. For example, imagine having a dishonest friend. Could we go to him with the secrets of our heart? Could we trust him? Would we trust anyone who might turn traitor? Again, suppose we were untrue to ourselves and the fact became known. Could we blame others if they passed us up as a companion? Never in a thousand years. We must sleep in the beds we prepare for ourselves. And that's the end of part one. Part two tomorrow. Make it a great day, and bye for now.